Welcome to our orientation lecture for hospitality law. What we're going to do today is go over some of the documents that you'll find in the section of Canvas labeled before you begin. And then we'll look at a couple of example modules so you'll get a flavor for how the course is arranged. So let's go ahead and begin. Um, when you enter the course, um, this will be the first screen that you see, and you'll see the absolute first module that you'll see in, in the screen says before you begin. Another name for this could be orientation. So this is where you're going to uh, work initially the first uh, two or three days of the course. I um, mean, you can see we have, I have a letter here to you that kind of introduces myself to you and the course. Here's some contact information. You'll also find this information in the syllabus, which is right below here. And of course, please read the entire syllabus. And then we have a, an orientation PowerPoint, which we'll be covering today. Finally, I list um, a few resources that Colin provides that, that uh, help you navigate in the online course world. Sometimes students, especially if it's their first online course, appreciate getting a little bit of extra support. And these resources can be helpful in that area. Also in the before you begin module, I have, an exam, I have a practice assignment submission. You don't have to do this, it doesn't count for a grade. But because I don't accept late homework, I wanna make sure that you feel comfortable with the process of submitting your homework through Canvas. And if you have any problems with it, let's say your computer doesn't work well with Canvas or something like that, we can find that out now by September 3rd, get the problem fixed so that when a real assignment is due, you'll be able to successfully submit it. I'll talk more about the topic as we go forward into our orientation. So, um, I guess I'd like to start by, I should have said this earlier, welcome, welcome to the course. I'm very, very excited to be teaching this. This is the first semester I've taught hospitality law. I teach uh, in the paralegal program here at Collin and I also teach business law. In many respects, hospitality law is very similar to business law, but of course it's geared toward a particular business, the hospitality business. Um, I know a lot about the law, I've been an attorney for, um, well over 20 years, um, but I don't, I'm not an expert in hospitality law, so this has been an interesting journey for me to learn about uh, your area of professional interest. Um, so we're going to go through um, this module a little bit. I'm going to encourage you to spend some time apart from this lecture um, touring Canvas so you are familiar with how it works. I'm also going to suggest that you pause this lecture at this time if you haven't already organized your note-taking equipment so that you'll be ready to take notes as we cover uh, topics, substantive topics, um, over the course of the next hour or so. So go ahead and pause me, and when you have your note-taking equipment, whatever that might be, start me up again. So we're back together. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Now my suggestion would be for you to take careful notes of this orientation lecture. The benefit for you of taking careful notes is that you don't have to listen to this lecture multiple times. If you uh, take careful notes once, you can be done with it. And as fascinating as orientation lectures always are, um, <laughs> I don't want you to have to spend more time on this than is strictly speaking necessary. Of course, you may find that much of the information that you would put in your notes may already be available either in the welcome letter, the syllabus, or the orientation a PowerPoint presentation. So um, you may want to look those over. And again, you can pause me and start looking at those tools if you'd like um, to see uh, what information I'm covering verbally that I don't already have listed here. Just so you'll know, you are responsible for everything in this lecture and for everything in this before you begin um, item. One of the things that we're working on in this course is getting you comfortable with mastering material that you are exposed to, being a careful and diligent reader. And so if I covered in the Before You Begin module, keep in mind that you are responsible for that information. So if you send me an email saying, what's your policy on X? What I'm likely to say is, thank you for your email. That's something I cover in the Before You Begin module. Uh, please refer to that. If you have difficulty finding it, please come to my office hours and you and I can work together to find that information. Um, so uh, before you send me a question about a policy or procedure, be confident that it's not already covered in the orientation material. I'm um, gonna refer to your notes. 
Okay, so let's begin. So we're going to go through each one of these documents um, separately, and I'm going to kind of do the highlights. I'm not going to do a deep dive because you're busy and I'm busy. You'll want to read these documents at your leisure, but I'm not going to go through them line by line. Here's the welcome letter. Um, this uh, tells you my name, Professor Groover. Um, I'm a full-time instructor, as I said before. I mainly teach in the Paralegal Studies Department. My office is on the Preston Ridge campus in Frisco. I office in the library building, which is kind of the main building on campus, and in room 232. I hope that if you have a chance that you'll, have, you, you'll uh, come by and visit with me during my office hours. I would really enjoy the opportunity to get to know you. Um, my email address is right here, cgroover at colin.edu. Uh, sometimes students will want to use this inbox feature over here, which I call the uh, Canvas messaging application or tool. Please don't use that to communicate with me. I don't check it on, an, on a regular basis. I do, however, check my emails constantly. So you will get a much quicker response if you send me an email through the colin.edu email um, address. Um, I usually will respond to emails within one business day. Um, I'm pretty consistent about that. Oftentimes I do teach courses on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so it might take me a little bit longer on those days to respond since I have back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back classes. Um, I also want to alert you to the fact that over the weekends I am typically out of the a DFW area in a location in which I don't have consistent cell phone or internet service. So I won't be able to get your emails and obviously I won't be able to respond them. So if you send me an email say, you know, uh, late Friday afternoon, you're probably not going to get a response until um, Monday at some point. So keep that in mind as you plan your time. Typically, grades will post within seven business days unless it's something of the due date, unless it's something that automatically grades. Um, if you are sending me emails, always remember to e uh, send the emails from your Cougar Mail account, not from your personal email account. That's important. It's a, co a college-wide policy. As always, for this and every class, be sure to read your syllabus from uh, beginning to end um, so that you will have all of the information that you need to be successful. Oh, going back to the email topic, uh, we'll talk more about this later on, but uh, be sure to, to make sure that your emails that you send really to anybody on prof you know, a pro professional or academic basis, that you have uh, spell checked it, that you've made sure that you've written in complete sentences, that you um, haven't used any abbreviations, that you've picked an, an appropriate subject line, that you've proofed uh, your, your email to make sure that it makes sense and that the reader will be able to respond uh, briefly and clearly to your uh, question. Uh, my experience is that emails sent from smartphones almost never meet these criteria. So my suggestion is um, you can do a draft on your smartphone, but be sure to go ahead and actually send it from a, a computer. That way you can send it through your spell check tool, maybe your uh, Word uh, version or whatever uh, uh, word processing tool that you use to make sure that there aren't any pesky uh, typos or things like that before you go ahead and submit it. I know you want to put your best foot forward when you're dealing with instructors and that's one way you can really communicate a certain level of professionalism to them. Okay, um, I do not accept any type of late homework. Um, we will have lots of opportunities to take uh, quizzes and homeworks and discussion boards throughout the semester. So it's not going to be surprising if you happen to miss one, possibly even two, hopefully not the quizzes, but uh, of the, the, the uh, um, uh, chapter-based uh, uh, projects. Um, missing one or even two is not going to be devastating to your grade, um, but you don't want to miss many. And so my suggestion to you in terms of completing things on a timely basis is to calendar everything this very day. Go through, look at the due dates, make sure that you have them correct in whatever day planning tool that you use. So I'm going to suggest that you pause right here and go ahead and, and record all those dates. 
Okay, we're back together. Uh, thanks for doing that. I think that's going to make uh, lead to uh, uh, success if you have those dates planned. So let's assume that something is due on, I don't know, October 10th. Um, my suggestion would be to actually plan on getting it ready to go several days before that. The reason that I make that suggestion is, again, I'm not going to be available for a few days around the time that the due date comes up, number one. And number two, life happens. I mean, we all know it. There can be technical problems. We can be sick. We can have some other responsibility. It could be family or perhaps uh, work-related. And um, since I don't accept late work, um, if you have that problem, um, you know, say on Saturday and you're not able to submit the assignment on Sunday, that can be a very frustrating experience. I want to uh, hopefully help you avoid that type of experience. So what I would suggest that you do in your day planner is type in the due date and then maybe four days ahead have another due date. And that's the due date that you're really shooting for. But again, if you have, if you're sick or you have some kind of technical problem and you can't make it that day, you have a little bit of breathing space. Um, I also, I don't allow makeup work and I also don't have test makeups. We only have two in this course, um, the midterm and the final examination. And the way that I handle that is instead of having makeup tests, is that I have a long window in which you can take the midterm and the final examination. Um, because I have a long window, it allows you, you know, if you um, have a crisis at work or you become sick or you're going to be out of town for a couple days, it allows you to go ahead and take that a test during the time that you are available. Of course, if you're going to be gone for that complete time, just contact me and you can take it before that window starts. I'll be happy to to help you with that. Um, if, let's say, the window is, is open for seven days and you get sick on the fifth day and aren't able to take it on the fifth, the sixth, or the seventh day, and you even have a doctor's note, my question to you is going to be, where's your doctor's note for the first four days? Um, so if you are well during that first or second or third day, probably it's a best practice for you to go ahead and take the test because who knows what the future holds. And um, the only way I'm going to allow you to make a, have a makeup test is that you have an, an excuse that's going to cover that entire period of time. Another thing I want to mention is my quiz policy. Um, the, the tests you're going to take through the testing center or through ProctorU. So those are going to be protected against any um, irregularities with how a student might complete the test. The quizzes, though, are not going to be proctored. I would love for them to be proctored. Um, I'm rather uncomfortable with the idea of taking um, any closed note uh, a quiz without having um, somebody present for it. But I also don't want to inconvenience students excessively. So what I've done is a compromise. You have a choice about quizzes. If you want to take the quiz in the privacy of your own home, you can do so but you only have 30 minutes for the quiz, which gives you a little bit less than a minute per question. More than enough time to answer the questions, but I hope not enough time for you to start flipping through resources that you're not supposed to be using. All quizzes are closed books, closed notes, closed neighbor. And so um, you ought to be able to complete it uh, pretty readily within that window of time. But some students like a little bit of extra time. Maybe they have a bit of test anxiety or they aren't the, the quickest reader or whatever the issue is. Um, that's great. I respect that. And in fact, I encourage students to be very, very careful when they're taking tests. So the way to approach tests under those circumstances is, excuse me, quizzes under those circumstances is just to reach out to me and say, I would like to take this quiz in the testing center and um, I will arrange for you to do so. No problem at all. If you take in the testing center, obviously it'll be proctored. There, you won't have the opportunity, obviously, to um, have your notes or your textbook or um, uh, assistance from anyone else. As a result, there's no need to have a time constraint on the test. So you can sit there for hours if you want. Um, so that's how um, the, uh, the quiz can work. But you have to let me know beforehand. Obviously, if you start the, the quiz at your home, uh, you can't then switch you, you can switch for the next quiz, but you can't switch for that quiz. You'll have to complete it um, online. So just be, be aware of, of that option 
And um, if you want to talk to me about it in more detail, feel free to come to my office hours. If you are certain that you want to take it to the testing center, just send me an email um, several days before the window opens, and I'll be glad to work with you on that. Um, if you haven't already done so, be sure to explore Canvas. There are our Canvas course here. I've tried to arrange it what I think is logical, but what is logical to one person isn't always logical to another person. So spend a little bit of time, get your bearings, and of course, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, reach out to me. I would be delighted to uh, get feedback from you of ways I can make it better and also to answer any questions that you might have. So that kind of concludes my welcome letter. Oh, well, let me talk a little bit. Actually, I haven't talked about Proctor U. So let me go ahead and do that. Um, I said that we have two tests, and those tests you'll take through the testing center. Um, those are proctored tests. But I recognize that there may be some students here who are going to be out of town during the window of time that you can take the midterm or the final examination. Um, in that case, you can take the test uh, through a remote proctoring tool. There are advantages and disadvantages to that. Obviously, if you're outside of the DFW area, um, you have the advantage of being able to take the test through the remote proctoring system. Um, uh, but the disadvantages are, are, are significant, and I want to just be candid with you and share, you, share those with you. The first of all is that ProctorU would be the service that you would use, and it is a fee-based service. Um, it's not very expensive. It's probably anywhere... Um, between $15 and say $40, those are ballpark numbers. And they, the cost associated with it is dependent upon the length of time you take to complete the test. So you, really you control that length of time. Um, as you can see, because it's not a trivial expense, if it's simply a, a if the only reason that you're thinking about not uh, coming into the testing center is, is because of the expense of gas or because of childcare, almost certainly um, childcare and or gas would be less expensive than using ProctorU. But again, that, that's your call to make whether you want to use it or not. Uh, ProctorU does require a pretty sophisticated computer setup. You'll need a webcam, for example, and, a, and an up-to-date computer with, with various features. And there is a, a systems check tool that we can use to see if your computer is prepared to handle the, the rigors of the ProctorU process. More important than, than probably the rigors of the system is, is you giving me notice at least 10 days before the first day of the window to take the test. This is important because the test that you'll take through ProctorU has to be formatted differently than the test that you will take if you take it through the Collin Testing Center. And it takes me a significant amount of time to prepare that. I don't at all mind doing it, but because it does take some time, I need some advance notice. So if you would, go ahead and do it today if you'd like to go ahead and let me know about your preferences in this area if you miss this deadline for the mid midterm no worries you can still take advantage of that for the final examination and here's some information about the orientation session down here if you um, want more information about um, you know online courses Okay, so now we've gone through this first welcome letter tool. We're going to go back to the modules. And we're going to go to my contact information. This information is also available in the syllabus, but here's just a reminder, and you can see don't use the, the inbox here. I prefer email to a telephone call simply because I'm not in my office a lot outside of my office hours. Um, but I'm glad to talk over the phone or meet face-to-face -face in more detail. My office hours are available in the syllabus. Let's go back to modules and let's look at the syllabus. I've already downloaded the syllabus here, so let's go ahead and look at it. Again, I'm going to give you the high points. I know that you'll spend a lot of time becoming familiar with it in greater detail, but um, the first thing to notice is our withdrawal date, which is October 20th, uh, which is a Friday. That's the last day that you can voluntarily withdraw from the course. Of course, I hope that you don't withdraw from the course, but it's good to have that date. And this is the same date for any 16-week course this, uh, this fall. Um, so keep that in mind. You might want to put it on your calendar as we go forward. Let's get, here's some information about the technological requirements for Canvas. Um, 
And here's some information about myself. Here are my office hours for um, the fall. I have uh, traditional office hours in my office for the most part, but I do have some virtual office hours. This can be a neat tool if um, you are in a different location um, than, uh, than, than is convenient to come to my office hours. Um, let, let me just show you how that works. This is a, Zoom is a really neat tool that the college provides to us. You can see here that we have a link right here. So I'm going to hit control click because you can see I'm, I'm on a PC right here, but I could be on my Android phone or my Mac computer. So I click on this and the Zoom classroom where I have my office hours will open up. Here it is. It's going to open up Internet Explorer. I'm not going to go through this whole process, but it's a super quick uh, process. You do have to download an app, but from beginning and end, from the time you click on the link until you're in the room with me, would be under five minutes. So it's super easy. Um, of course, if you have any problems with it, uh, feel free to just uh, email me or give me a call, and we'll work through whatever the issues are. You'll see at the end of the syllabus are all those due dates that we were talking about earlier. So um, if you haven't had a chance to write all those out, I would encourage you to pause right now, pull up the syllabus and get all of these dates into your day planner uh, uh, information. Hopefully we're back now. You've done all those good tasks. And I'm going to go into the um, orientation PowerPoint. Oh, I actually shouldn't have clicked on that button. I apologize. So here we are. Let me, I'm just going to again do the highlights of this. We're not going to do a deep dive. Um, this is available to you so you can look a little bit uh, in more detail. As I've already said, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm very excited about teaching this course. I, I hope that you're as excited as I am. This is me right here, and here is a little bit of information about myself. I started practicing law in 1990, and um, I've worked in both a large law firm and in a large corporation, and I've been here at Collin for uh, since 2010. Uh, mainly, I've worked as a litigator and an employment attorney is my background. I don't have any direct experience in the hospitality industry other than being a customer, um, but um, I'm looking forward to learning more about this uh, wonderful industry. I talked about my office. This is what your textbook looks like. We're currently on the fourth edition. Um, I have not had a chance to see earlier editions, so I'm not sure how similar it is. Uh, my experience generally is that usually you can get an earlier edition and it's going to work just fine, um, but I can't tell you that in this case. Uh, so you may want to consider that as you weigh your, your, your decision about which resource to buy. You absolutely do need the textbook for this course. So uh, please don't think about saving some money by, by going without it. You can, though, use an ebook form, or you can uh, rent a book, or you can have a used book, or maybe you can partner up with another student and uh, share a book with that, with that other student. Um, there won't be any open book tests or things like that, so you won't need the book at a particular time. Um, I try to replicate um, in the online classroom the face-to-face -face experience. Um, this course is one that we do offer both face-to-face -face and online, but I recognize that there are students out there who appreciate the convenience of the online environment, but prefer the personal touch of the face-to-face -face classroom. As a result, I offer lectures for all of my my classes, including this one. Um, they're not going to be as long as the in-class um, three hours, um, but I try to cover most of the, the topics and point you to the um, issues that might be most important or most tricky for your mastery. Um, so my goal here is to make this be a place that you feel comfortable, that you feel that um, you get to know me and that there's an opportunity for me to get to know you as well. Here is uh, some information about um, uh, resources for online students. Um, if this is your first online course, you may find this a useful tool for you to, um, to consider using. 
as always, we were talking about reading your syllabus. Also, read your announcements. I will be posting announcements throughout the course, um, things that are going on, things to look out for. Please be sure to read those as you get them popping into your um, uh, Cougar Mail mailbox. Um, visit at least three times a week and visit by Tuesday of each week if you would. I'd appreciate that. You'll have discussion board posts to do. There'll be two for this class every week. And in fact, this, this first week, um, I think there are actually two discussion boards, so you'll have four to actually do for this week. Um, but most, most modules, there will just be the two. Um, and you'll need to pay, uh, spread those out. Your first post, you'll need to complete by noon on Saturday. Your second post, you have until 11.59 p.m. on Sunday night. I'm, I'm not a person to remind you about deadlines. I respect the fact that we're all adults and um, you want to be treated like an adult. I certainly would want to be treated like an adult uh, when I take college courses. Uh, so um, uh, I, I know that uh, you will have calendared these things and be ready uh, to submit those on time. And if something happens in your life where you can't, you'll understand and take, uh, take the, the consequences of that. Please reach out to me when you have questions. I really appreciate and enjoy getting to know students on a personal basis. Uh, so call me, uh, stop by my office hours, come to a Zoom virtual office hour um, so we can develop uh, more of a personal relationship if you would. Here's some more information about emails. I know I talked about it briefly about how to approach an email, but here's a little bit more specifics. Uh, slides 14 and 15 give you a little bit more information about how you can prepare a successful email. If you haven't developed this skill yet, I encourage you to do so because it's difficult to be successful in any, indus any industry, including the hospitality industry, if you aren't able to prepare a professional email. And so this, you can see this as, as preparation for that career goal. And I will hold you accountable. So if you send me an email that doesn't meet these standards, I'm likely to send it back to you and say, okay, let's try one more time. Why don't you address you know, the sentence fragments or why don't you address the typos or whatever. Uh, send it to me again and then I'll answer your question. I don't do that to be, um, Unusual, undif difficult with you. I do that. So hopefully you'll be able to learn and grow in that area so that you'll feel more confident in your emails that you send to folks. Let's see. Here's how grades are calculated. You'll also find this information on the syllabus. Class participation is 10%. That's the discussion boards. Assignments are 20%. Uh, quizzes will just have a few or 20%. The midterm is 25 and the final examination is 25. Sometimes students um, uh, it will, well actually let me, let me flip here for a second and go and look at something else here. So I'm going to go into um, our grades here. So I'm going to click on grades. Obviously there aren't any grades yet and, and I'm not an actual student in the class. Um, but ordinarily there would be grades here. And at the very bottom, it would tell you um, an overall grade. Well, the grades up here are meaningful, but I haven't programmed the weights over here. As you may recall, uh, final exams are 25%, class participation is 10%, but you can see everything here is 20%. I intentionally don't do this. I mean, I intentionally don't put in the equation because Canvas um, lacks uh, the sophistication, I guess you could say. I mean, I love Canvas, but this is a, a problem with Canvas is it lacks the sophistication to capture all the nuances of how I calculate grades. So it's always going to be off. And so I make sure it's really off so you won't be tempted to say, oh, well, it's pretty close. No, it's not going to be pretty close. It's going to be pretty far off. So all of the data here will be correct. But um, the, uh, the calculation, you'll need to refer to the syllabus. So don't even pay attention to information that might be down here in the gray area. OK, so let's go on to our next slide. I've already talked about ProctorU and the midterm. 
Um, the way the midterm will work is that uh, you will take the midterm on a computer, but you'll do it in one of the testing centers. You get to pick which one. It can be the one on the uh, Preston Ridge campus, the one on the Central Park campus, or the one on the Spring Creek campus, unless, of course, you're using the ProctorU tool tool. You won't need a Scantron. You won't need a pencil. Um, you'll show up at the testing center. You'll need to have your student ID for that. And then you will... Um, uh, the the uh, proctor for, for that uh, uh, testing center will enter in the uh, password, the secret password, um, so that you'll be able to access the test. You won't be able to get into the test without that password, and you won't have access to that password. So um, uh, that's how the midterm works. That's also how the final examination works. I said before how it's a good idea to take the midterm and final early, but there's one other reason other than the fact that life happens. But another, there's another good reason to take the midterm and the final a little bit early, and that is that our testing centers don't have an infinite number of computers. And so there can be times where all the computers are being used. Um, if you're not, uh, if it's not the last date, you can come again at a different time. But if it's the last date, you're stuck there getting the test completed and you might be waiting for quite a while. Here's some information about the discussion board. As you can see, the, the due date time for the discussion board is going to be 11.59 p.m. on each Sunday. Most modules will just have one um, discussion board. And so when you see a discussion board be available to you, then you know that that is going to go away at 11.59 p.m. Uh, on the, the Sunday that, that is coming up. Um, so you know, other than again, that first one, there will only be one to do at any particular time. Again, here's some information to think about um, as you're preparing your discussion board uh, comments. I'm not going to go through these, but you're going to want to refer to these guidelines before you uh, actually put together your discussion board posts. Here's some FAQs to think about. Uh, we don't have any class meetings, but of course, um, my lectures will kind of replace what might have been a class meeting. I recognize that things, especially in an online class, can be complicated. And many times people choose to take an online class when they do because they know that there are going to have weeks where they're not going to be available. And you don't have any, there's no difficulty associated with you um, uh, taking a week off if you want to. If there's a test or an assignment due that week, all you have to do is complete it before that time that you're going to be unavailable. If it's a midterm or a final exam, you'll have to reach out to me to take it early, but um, that won't be a problem. I'll be glad to make those arrangements for you. Keep in mind, again, that I don't accept late assignments and I don't permit makeup tests. Um, if you have problems with a computer access, just know that we have computer labs on all three of our major campuses. Your tuition is your uh, 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 provides you with, with the benefit of being able to use um, the computer lab, so please take advantage of those. Obviously, um, if you are going to listen to a lecture, you'll need some headphones or earbuds or something like that to um, uh, hear the lecture. Sometimes students get concerned about um, successfully submitting things in Canvas. I mean, you're concerned about your grades. It's a perfectly legitimate concern to have. I'm going to discuss how you can feel confident when you make a submission. And I'll do that in just a few minutes. Here's a slide you might want to take note of. It's slide 36. It is. Um, some technical suggestions. Um, I would suggest that you keep these handy because you won't be, if you're having technical problems, you might not be able to get into this PowerPoint to pull this up. But these are some good, good ideas. Uh, we all know that uh, both computers and Canvas can, can have problems. And sometimes they are things completely outside of our control. And so it's best to be prepared for those. Recognize it's going to happen. Recognize it's going to be frustrating. But to, to do everything we can to minimize those frustrations frustrations. These are just some approaches that oftentimes works, um, um, and so those are some things to think about. 
I hope that we'll have a great semester together. I'm sure that we will. I'm looking forward to getting to know each and every one of you. So now I'm going to flip on over to our next topic. So I'm going to go back to modules. And I'm going to skip over these resources. And I'm not going to do this practice assignment and submission. As I said before, this is voluntary. You don't have to do it. It's just if you want to have the experience, practice making a submission. OK, so now we have completed the Before You Begin orientation module. And we're going to look at just one module here, module one. The modules are set up in a very similar way. The first item in the module will be the lecture. Sometimes there's just one recorded lecture. Sometimes there's more than one. I try to keep the lectures as short as I can, and sometimes I can do it all in one lecture. Sometimes I need more than one. Um, obviously, they're listed in the order of priority. In fact, I think I have one for Chapter 3. There's multiple. And you can see I discuss what the topic is within that particular module. Below the lecture is the PowerPoint that I use in the lecture. Um, it's sometimes a good idea to print out the PowerPoint or at least pull it up on your computer so you can take notes within the PowerPoint as you're watching the lecture. Please be smart and take careful notes while you're watching the lecture as opposed to having to watch the lecture multiple times. That can be really, really frustrating to get all the information. Please know that you're responsible for the material in the lecture just as you are responsible for the material in the textbook. Most of the material in the lecture is also covered in the textbook, but I do provide Texas-specific information and sometimes other information. And certainly my lecture does not cover all aspects of the, of the uh, textbook chapter. So you do need to watch both. You need to, read the sorry, you need to read the textbook and watch the lecture to truly be prepared for the class. You can see this first module, I happen to have two discussion boards. Usually there's just going to be one. And then I have an assignment here. So we're going to just look at this assignment for a second so we can kind of get familiar with the format. You'll see the due date here, and then you'll see uh, the number of potential points you can get. So we'll go ahead and click on this. Okay, so this is what the assignment says. For this assignment, locate the ordinance for Frisco, Texas that relates to smoking in places like bars and restaurants. A good search engine will help you find the information. So how would I approach it? Okay, I would say smoking bars res don't need to make it all caps, do I? Smoking we'll just say restaurants. Frisco. Okay. Ah, look at this, the very top item, Smoking Ordinance, City of Frisco. Okay, not too hard to find, right? You're going to want to read it to make sure it's the right one. I haven't looked at it, so I don't know. Uh, since this is a PDF, that's probably not the best one to actually use. You're going to want something um, in a more user-friendly approach. Here we go. Um, I'm going to add ordinance. Well, maybe we can't find it elsewhere. Okay, so you know you may you may need to go ahead and cut and paste this. So what you would do under these circumstances is you would just do this. Here we go. Actually, why don't we do this? So what we'll do is we'll download it and then you can attach it uh, to the document. Or I'm sure you can find it in a Word document somewhere. So you can attach it or download it. Um, and then um, you're going to answer these questions. So you'll look at the document and then you'll, you'll number your document. I'm just going to open up a Word document right here. You don't have to use Word, but um, so what you would do is you would, you know, give the, you know, let's see, uh, questions about the smoking ordinance 
in Frisco. And then you're going to have number one, tab. And then you say, does Frisco permit smoking in restaurants or bars? If so, under what conditions? And so I don't know what the answer to this question is. So I'm just going to make up an answer. But obviously, in the real world, you'd read the question. So your answer to the question has to include the question itself so that the reader doesn't have to refer back to the question. So I'm going to say, Frisco allows smoking in restaurants and bars whenever there is a full moon. Obviously, that's not the real rule, but that's an example. Um, if so, under what circumstances? Okay, so that this is an example um, of how you mean. And then we go to the question, how does Frisco address e-cigarettes? And then I give you a hint here about an ordinance. And so you would answer that question. So you might say, Frisco addresses e cigarettes in this manner and then you'd add whatever that is and then the third item is do you agree or disagree with the policy why obviously this is your own opinion uh, but what I don't want to hear is I agree with it because I'm a smoker or I disagree with it because I'm a, I'm a smoker or whatever your position is present a a policy reason that you feel because you're in the hospitality industry. So make the business argument about why this policy is a good idea or a bad idea. I don't care which position you take, but make the business argument for it, not your personal preference argument here. Um, so in SEC, aside from the cut and pasted ordinance, your response to the question should be in complete grammatically correct sentences. Your entire, entire response, in other words, your answers to these three questions need to be at least 100 words long. You should number your answer to each question. You should answer each question so it's not necessary for the reader to have access to the question list. At the end of your assignment, include the word count for the portion of your assignment that does not include the ordinance. So I'm going to, um, it um, permits e-cigarettes. Um, it permits nuns, rabbis, and one-legged sailors to use e-cigarettes. Okay. I agree with the Frisco ordinance because um, one-legged sailors are an important part of the customer base for my restaurant um, peg leg bar. Okay. So now I'm going to do word count. Um, word will do it for me. And I have 62 words. Actually, these would not count as words. So I'm going to get rid of this. So let me count again. So I have 55 words. So word count 55. Okay, well, I guess I have to go back and do that. So I'm going to need to add some more to this uh, content um, uh, to get it to 100. Remember to include your word count. You can count it yourself or you can have word to do it. Um, so anyway, so once you've completed this assignment, let me go ahead and save this. Save. Okay, now I'm going to post it. So how do I submit it? I hit this button here called Submit Assignment. 
and I'm going to choose a file. So I need to go into my right file here. Open. Here it is. If I, if I look at this file name, yeah, that looks right. I'm going to hit, ass, hit assignment. And of course, if I wanted to download that, um, uh, the, the uh, ordinance, then we'll, we'll look at that in a second. So here it is. So let's say I don't trust Canvas, and I, I'm not sure if it worked or not. All I have to do is click on this. And I'll be able to see what it is I post. Oh yeah, that's what I want. So I did everything right. I'm in good shape. But let's say that I don't like that. Or let's say, oh, wait a second, I forgot to submit the, the, the uh, other document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and submit my first document. And then I'm going to pretend that... Um, that this PowerPoint is the ordinance. It's not. that. Uh, so now I have two files. And you can, I can keep on adding as many as I need. So now takes a while to think about it. So the, the takeaway is that you can see what you've submitted. You can see exactly what I can see. And so if it's not the right document, just try it again. You can experiment with it to see what works and what doesn't work. If for some reason Canvas isn't cooperating, just be sure that you figure that out before the due date. And you can let me know and we can figure out what's going on. I don't accept email submissions unless it's something that we've worked out in advance. Um, let's imagine that despite your best efforts, you just can't seem to manage to make Canvas work. Well, you see something here in Canvas, but you're just not sure if it went through. An alternative that you can do is you can post it to the best of your ability on Canvas, and then you can email it to yourself. And that way, when I go in, I say, hey, Bob, let's say your name is Bob. Hey, Bob, I, I tried to um, pull up that document, but it wouldn't open for me. And then you can say, oh, I was worried that that might have happened. I sent the email to myself, and you have to use your Cougar Mail account for this, so be sure to use that. So you sent it to, uh, from your Cougar Mail account to your Cougar Mail account. You attach the documents, and you have a timestamp that's before the due date. And so when you don't show a grade and you say, what's going on here? Why am I not getting a grade? And then you can show me the evidence that, in fact, you did what you needed to do. Just come to my office hours, and we'll figure it out. Bring, um, well, I actually wouldn't need to bring anything. You could, we could pull up on my computer the, all that information. Uh, so no worries if that happens. Um, I've never actually needed to use that tool, but some students find it comforting to know that they can prove to me that they actually did submit it and Canvas was uh, being naughty. Um, it's having a little bit of struggle here actually downloading it. So this might be one of those times if this were to happen to you and, and it and eventually timed out that you might actually do want to email it to yourself. Uh, I'm not going to keep on holding this up. Actually, what I'm going to do is... Maybe I'll just choose another file. I think that might have been the problem. Uh, let's see. We'll go in. We'll pull up it from a different class. OK. We'll see if that works. Well, we've really completed the lecture topics that we were going to cover today. Um, 
in terms of the orientation. Um, I hope that you have fun in the course, that you dive in and learn a lot of cool things about the law. Hospitality, the hospitality industry is quite regulated and there's lots of legal risks. And so I think this information will be very relevant to you and your, ah, here we go. We have both of our documents. Here's one and here's the other. Again, I could check them both. Um, but let's say I'm satisfied with this. I don't have to resubmit. I'm good to go. Again, thank you for your attention. Have a wonderful day. Take care.